Hi, Roy here. Roy Reads Anything, channel I do about old books that are strange or interesting or just weird. And now I'm going to do for the first time a kind of vlog type thing. Uh, so during this week I'm going to read a comic book. This comic book, not just any comic book, it's Superman Family 171 from July 1975. Cover dated July 1975. Uh, so uh, yes, nothing whatsoever special about this comic. In fact I'd say it's the antithesis of special. For me, Superman family would be like, you know, you might possibly get it if all, all the other comics had already been disappeared from the from the racks. Um, I've never knowingly bought a Superman Family comic, but it reached out to me over the decades when I saw the cover scan on like a old Git's Facebook group. And one one reason, I suppose, is just it's the cover's doing what it was intended to do. It's got hooks. Uh, these Silver Age DC comics, um, this period, a lot of you know, the cover would show you some action and the characters and some jeopardy. So you'd think, wow, that looks exciting. But also there'd be usually some kind of setup or state of affairs where you were like, how, how can this be? How can this strange thing be happening? And I think that's what we see here because we have special guest star issue. Supergirl and Batgirl clash with Cleopatra. Queen of America. So Cleopatra, how can Cleopatra from history be in the present day? How does she become Queen of America? Then there's a sort of battle going to happen. Supergirl is hurtling towards Cleopatra, which, you know, obviously Supergirl doesn't intend to just turn her into like jam. So Cleopatra must be somehow super powered. Oh, how can these things be happening? And then Batgirl, let the duel begin, she says, dropping a handkerchief. So why is she, like, refereeing? And then you've got other characters in the background striking some pretty, pretty awesome poses, as if they're kind of looking on and cheering on the this, this kind of battle. So lots of what, what on earth's going on now. I've been around the block a bit, and I know that none of this is actually going to happen in the comic, but something related to this will be there. So it's drawn me in, and like Cleopatra, fantastic. You know, Egyptomania, the fascination with, with ancient Egypt, or our sort of images of ancient Egypt have been kind of going on for since like Victorian times. I think... Um, if this was the 70s, there would have been a big Cleopatra movie, probably about 10 or 12 years before, Tutankhamun exhibition, Tour in the World, you know, so it's kind of a kind of a topical thing. So this is what I'm going to be reading. I think it's going to be 80 pages if it's giant, Superman family giant. Um, you see the... the the head of Supergirl there, and it says Supergirl presents Superman family. So interesting to see what these presenting chores actually involved as she kind of turned to us and tell us things or whatever. Um, I think it was, um, I'm pretty sure now, you know, in case you're thinking, well, look at the feminism in action of DC Comics in the 70s. Um, with all these female characters, I think the Superman family, the Superman family, was Supergirl's only comic at the time. <laughs> oh, God. You also got this sort of roster down the side showing the other characters we're presumably going to get stories of in here who comprise this Superman family. So there's Supergirl again in a sort of flying pose. I don't know how many times she's on this. Disembodied head, flying pose, hurtling towards Cleopatra. 
So uh, yeah, three three outings. Jimmy Olsen, there he is in a very kind of um, stylish 70s look. They're not making him wear a little bow tie. He's actually wearing flares, flares, not just flares, but patterned flares. So there's, there's Jimmy Olsen. And there, Lois Lane. Lois Lane, fashion forward Lois Lane. Because those that was the times of the days that it was. Anyway, I wouldn't have appreciated this in 1975. I was mad about the artwork of Jack Kirby and the kind of cosmic stuff happening in Marvel. This would have looked corny and um, simplistic. Now I think it's great. I mean, the cleanness of the lines, the composition, the... You know, all, all of that stuff, I think, is is is, is actually actually superb. So, uh, looking forward to getting into it. So that's the lure. That's why I've got the comic. It's giant. I'm going to be reading it in little chunks, and we'll report back and tell you what I find about Cleopatra, Queen of America. See you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> 